Here are the major highlights of pro wrestling from this weekend. Kicking things off with WWE SmackDown, Bianca Belair made her WWE return after two months away from SmackDown. Bianca's return came in the show closing segment on SmackDown following Io Sky versus Charlotte Flair for the Women's Championship in the main event. Io Sky defeated Charlotte with interference from Damage Control teammates Bailey and Dakota Kai, and Damage Control continued to attack Charlotte Flair after the bell. So Bianca ran in for the save and stood tall with Charlotte to end the episode. Bianca last appeared on the August 18th. SmackDown show where an injury angle was shot with damage control, attacking Bianca's leg. The angle was a storyline reason to give Bianca time off in what she later described as a break for just some self-care. The return of Bianca seemed imminent this week when she was advertised for the November 4th Crown Jewel pay-per-view in Saudi Arabia. During her hiatus, Bianca made an appearance at the New York Stock Exchange on behalf of WWE on the day Endeavor's acquisition of WWE became official. And the company was merged with UFC as part of TKO Group Holdings Incorporated. In addition to her in-ring career, Bianca and husband Montez Ford will have a reality show on Hulu beginning late this year or early in 2024. And Bianca also noted that she is working on publishing a children's book. A crown jewel contract signing is set for next week's WWE SmackDown on FS1. Roman Reigns and LA Knight will sign the contract for their upcoming match at Crown Jewel on next week's show. SmackDown will air on FS1 next Friday due to the first night of the World Series airing on Fox. LA Knight appeared on Friday's SmackDown and confronted Paul Heyman after Roman Reigns laid him out last Friday. He told Paul that if anyone was going to put him down, they better put him down for good. He also told Heyman that just as quick as his rise has been, it'll be just as fast as he takes the undisputed WWE Universal Championship off of Roman Reigns. And speaking of Crown Jewel, a match for the United States title is official. Rey Mysterio and Logan Paul made it official for November 4th in Saudi Arabia after the two exchanged words on Friday's show. Paul told Mysterio that he didn't want to face him as he had already beaten him last year at WrestleMania. However, he said he did want the United States Championship. Rey Mysterio told Logan Paul that he thinks Paul needs humbling. The segment ended with the two reluctantly shaking hands. After Logan Paul defeated Dylan Danis in a boxing match last weekend, he called out Rey Mysterio in the post-match interview, specifically saying that he wanted the United States title. Logan Paul last made an appearance at SummerSlam, defeating Ricochet in the opening match. On to AEW Collision. John Moxley made his return to AEW on Collision. The end of Saturday's show had Big Bill and Ricky Starks retain the AEW tag team titles over Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta when the House of Black interfered. Ricky Starks and Big Bill joined in to attack Castagnoli and Wheeler when Brian Danielson and FTR came out for the save. John Moxley then arrived and helped the BCC and FTR clear the ring. John Moxley had been out of action since AEW Dynamite Grand Slam when he was injured in a match against Ray Phoenix. Moxley called an audible and ended up losing the AEW international title to Ray Phoenix. The House of Black are back in AEW. After Brian Danielson defeated Andrade El Idolo on Saturday's show, the lights went out. When they came back on, Malachi Black appeared in the ring and laid out Brian with the Black Mask kick. When Wheeler Yuta and Claudio Castagnoli came down for the save, the lights went out again. When they came back on again, Malachi Black was gone. Later, the entirety of the House of Black made their return during an FTR match with Brody King using a cast to take out both men. As a trio, the House of Black had been gone from AEW television since All In back in late August, when they lost the AEW's trios titles to the acclaimed and Billy Gunn. In an Instagram Stories post last month, Malachi Black said that he was dealing with a calf tear and a hyperextended knee, denying that he was out with an injured back. Malachi had spent most of 2023 wrestling and trios matches. Kazuchika Okada is returning to AEW. At the start of Battle of the Bounce on Saturday, John Moxley was exiting the ring with the rest of the Blackpool Combat Club when Orange Cassidy came out shoulder checking Moxley as he made his way to the ring. Moxley had to be restrained as Cassidy entered the ring. Later in the show, Cassidy mentioned the incident and said that Brian Danielson and Claudio Castagnoli have also been in his face. He 
challenged the two to a match at Dynamite, then revealed New Japan Pro Wrestling star Okada as his tag team partner. In addition, Hikaru Shida will defend the AEW Women's title against Ruby Soho, who defeated Sky Blue on AEW Rampage. Ruby Soho cut a promo on Saturday's Collision, saying she needed to become a champion. On to some Impact Wrestling news. Impact Wrestling is crossing the line back to TNA. At the conclusion of Bound for Glory on Saturday night, Impact Wrestling aired a video revealing that the promotion is changing its name back to TNA Wrestling. It will also be the first time since 2017 that the promotion has been known as TNA. The rebrand goes into effect starting with Hard to Kill 2024, which is taking place from the Palms Casino Resort in Las Vegas on Saturday, January 13th. In an Impact Wrestling press release, President Scott Demore said, We still hear the TNA chants wherever we go. Fans have longed for TNA wrestling, so that's what we're bringing back in 2024. TNA wrestling, we're back. The press release stated that the rebrand will include TNA running larger, more prestigious venues. Saying, company officials confirmed that the new year will launch a new look. TNA wrestling that runs from the entrance ramp to turnbuckles in the ring to larger, more prestigious venues and much more. Scott Demore will provide further details in an interview that will be posted on Impact's Facebook page this Tuesday. TNA launched as NWA Total Nonstop Action in 2002. The company celebrated its 20th anniversary last year. At Bound for Glory on Saturday night, a former AEW wrestler made their surprise Impact Wrestling debut. Sonny Kiss appeared as one of the entrants in the Call Your Shot gauntlet match at Bound for Glory. Sonny entered the 20-person match as the ninth entrant. She was eliminated by Matt Cardona and Brian Myers. This September, Tony Khan confirmed that he did not renew Kiss's AEW contract. Kiss had been with the promotion since its launch in 2019. Tony said he really liked Sonny Kiss, but it's hard to get everyone on television with such a big roster. Sonny Kiss issued a statement following her AEW departure, saying that she's ready for her next chapter and wants to continue to break barriers down. And last but not least, one of pro wrestling's biggest legends looks to be entering the podcast industry. In a post on his Instagram stories on Friday, The Undertaker announced that he's launching a Patreon for a project called Six Feet Under with Mark Calloway. The project will feature in-depth conversations with the Hall of Fame wrestler. It appears that WWE isn't involved with Undertaker's Six Feet Under project. The Undertaker was inducted into the WWE Hall Hall of Fame in 2022. Since then, he and WWE have partnered together to bring a one-man show called Undertaker One Dead Man Show on tour. The one-man show usually takes place surrounding WWE events. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and catch you on the next one.